high basins, and wide open valleys. Places where bulls can chase cows, drink fresh mountain water, and bugle into the void. This is elk country. Our public lands give all of us the opportunity to discover our own adventure. Whether it's your first hunt or your 100th hunt, we own this place. I'm Brad Brooks from Argali, and these are my public lands. Let's all do our part to support the companies and the organizations that are protecting the future of our elk hunting heritage. The RS series is our smart rifle safe. It's Wi-Fi enabled, biometric, and has modular interior. The RS series will store multiple ARs and pistol combinations. The backlit numeric keypad will light up at night to allow you to enter the safe in dark environments. And the fingerprint scanner stores up to 20 unique fingerprints. The RS series can be customized by placing the accessories anywhere you like on the perforated mounting board. A total of four solid steel locking bolts will keep your safe firmly locked and secure. The anti-pry bars built into the safe will protect it from tools and small objects trying to penetrate the exterior of the safe. Wi-Fi on the RS works with your phone to help you get live alerts, temperature and humidity detection alerts, manage user accounts, check battery usage, and much more. The RS series is smart key enabled, so you can use the smart key nano or smart key to enter your safe with the press of a button. The Hornady Rapid Vehicle Safe features fast and dependable touch-free access to your firearm while in your vehicle. The RFID wristband, key fob, or decal instantly opens the Rapid Vehicle Safe for immediate access to your handgun. The conventional key lock can also be used. The included mounting system allows the safe to be secured without the need to modify your vehicle. This patent pending mounting system features an inflatable bladder that slides between the seat and center console, securely positioning the safe in a ready position. With an exterior housing made of 14 gauge steel and two internal hardened locking lugs, the Rapid Vehicle Safe exceeds ASTM international safety standards for child and pry resistance. The Rapid Vehicle Safe from Hornady ensures your handgun is always protected and ready to go wherever you go. This is the first focal plane Diamondback Tactical. At the intersection of precision and value, the Diamondback Tactical first focal plane rifle scopes deliver an impressive array of features and performance. The XD optical system and fully multi-coated lenses transmit a crisp, bright sight picture. First focal plane, glass etched reticle keeps subtensions accurate throughout the 4x zoom range. Exposed tactical turrets and a side parallax knob give shooters the tools needed for long distance precision shooting. The single piece 30mm tube is ruggedly built to withstand recoil and impacts. While strong O ring seals and nitrogen purging guarantee waterproof and fog proof performance. Purpose built to extend your effective range and stretch your dollar, the Diamondback Tactical comes equipped with the features you need at an unbelievable price. And it's covered for life by the Vortex VIP warranty. Nobody thinks it will happen to them, but with over 2,000 emergency phone calls per month to our independent program attorney answered hotline, it's closer to home than you think. At U.S. Law Shield, we give you exclusive access to our 24-7, 365 emergency hotline. Not a call center, direct access to our network of independent program attorneys. With a price point of only $10.95 per month and unlimited attorney hours for criminal and civil defense, U.S. Law Shield provides you with unparalleled service and protection where it matters most. No other program comes close. We believe an educated member is an empowered member. We do this by providing educational resources featuring seasoned attorneys, firearms instructors, law enforcement, and experts in all areas. We at U.S. Law Shield believe peace of mind should come with simple and affordable protection. This is the Voltec VT-10i. It's your travel buddy, so it goes where you go. 
to your work, on the road, or at the range. It's the smart and rugged safe built to protect, no matter what you trust it with. We've made sure every inch of your safe is built to the highest possible standards. Security is at the forefront of our thoughts, so no unwanted guest. The VT-10i provides multiple quick and simple access points, including high-resolution biometrics, backlit numeric keys, keyed entry, and even your smartphone for remote access. The two-point anti-impact latches keep your safe strong, and vault lithium-ion battery charges in just 2.5 hours and lasts up to six months, so it won't let you down. There's a reason we're the number one rated biometric safe. Get yours at VoltTechSafe.com and find us online at Facebook.com slash VoltTechSafe. SnapSafe TSA Padlock comes in a convenient two-pack and features an overbuilt all-steel design. The TSA lock allows TSA inspectors to inspect your luggage without damaging your lock. The four-digit tumblers give you 10,000 possible combinations and these locks work great for hard cases, camera equipment, or personal luggage. For more information, check us out at SnapSafe.com. Big bulls need big country. I'm talking about wild rivers, desolate peaks, high basins, and wide open valleys. Places where bulls can chase cows, drink fresh mountain water, and bugle into the void. This is elk country. Our public lands give all of us the opportunity to discover our own adventure. Whether it's your first hunt or your 100th hunt, we own this place. I'm Brad Brooks from Argali, and these are my public lands. Let's all do our part to support the companies and the organizations that are protecting the future of our elk hunting heritage. The RS series is our smart rifle safe. It's Wi-Fi enabled, biometric, and has modular interior. The RS series will store multiple ARs and pistol combinations. The backlit numeric keypad will light up at night to allow you to enter the safe in dark environments. And the fingerprint scanner stores up to 20 unique fingerprints. The RS series can be customized by placing the accessories anywhere you like on the perforated mounting board. A total of four solid steel locking bolts will keep your safe firmly locked and secure. The anti-pry bars built into the safe will protect it from tools and small objects trying to penetrate the exterior of the safe. Wi-Fi on the RS works with your phone to help you get live alerts, temperature and humidity detection alerts, manage user accounts, check battery usage, and much more. The RS series is smart key enabled, so you can use the smart key Nano or smart key to enter your safe with the press of a button. The Hornady Rapid Vehicle Safe features fast and dependable touch-free access to your firearm while in your vehicle. The RFID wristband, key fob, or decal instantly opens the Rapid Vehicle Safe for immediate access to your handgun. The conventional key lock can also be used. The included mounting system allows the safe to be secured without the need to modify your vehicle. This patent pending mounting system features an inflatable bladder that slides between the seat and center console, securely positioning the safe in a ready position. With an exterior housing made of 14 gauge steel and two internal hardened locking lugs, the Rapid Vehicle Safe exceeds ASTM international safety standards for child and pry resistance. The Rapid Vehicle Safe from Hornady ensures your handgun is always protected and ready to go wherever you go. 
This is the first focal plane Diamondback Tactical. At the intersection of precision and value, the Diamondback Tactical first focal plane rifle scopes deliver an impressive array of features and performance. The XD optical system and fully multi-coated lenses transmit a crisp, bright sight picture. The first focal plane, glass hatch reticle, keeps subtensions accurate throughout the 4X zoom range. Exposed tactical turrets and a side parallax knob give shooters the tools needed for long distance precision shooting. The single piece 30mm tube is ruggedly built to withstand recoil and impacts. While strong O-ring seals and nitrogen purging guarantee waterproof and fog-proof performance. Purpose built to extend your effective range and stretch your dollar, the Diamondback Tactical comes equipped with the features you need at an unbelievable price. And it's covered for life by the Vortex VIP warranty. Nobody thinks it will happen to them, but with over 2,000 emergency phone calls per month to our independent program attorney answered hotline, it's closer to home than you think. At U.S. Law Shield, we give you exclusive access to our 24-7, 365 emergency hotline. Not a call center, direct access to our network of independent program attorneys. With a price point of only $10.95 per month and unlimited attorney hours for criminal and civil defense, U.S. Law Shield provides you with unparalleled service and protection where it matters most. No other program comes close. We believe an educated member is an empowered member. We do this by providing educational resources featuring seasoned attorneys, firearms instructors, law enforcement, and experts in all areas we at U.S. Law Shield believe peace of mind should come with simple and affordable protection. This is the Voltec VT-10i. It's your travel buddy, so it goes where you go. To your work, on the road, or at the range. It's the smart and rugged safe built to protect, no matter what you trust it with. We've made sure every inch of your safe is built to the highest possible standards. Security is at the forefront of our thoughts, so no unwanted guest. The VT-10i provides multiple quick and simple access points, including high-resolution biometrics, backlit numeric keys, keyed entry, and even your smartphone for remote access. The two-point anti-impact latches keep your safe strong and Voltec lithium-ion battery charges in just 2.5 hours and lasts up to six months. So it won't let you down. There's a reason we're the number one rated biometric safe. Get yours at VoltecSafe.com and find us online at Facebook.com slash VoltecSafe. Don't kick us off. We're doing an approved demonstration on a, on a range in a very safe way with a very dirty gun. All right, we're going to figure it out. Here you go. Ready? Up. All right, cool. Fire's nice. It speaks the universal language. A cool gun. Wicked cool. We're always into cool guns here at Cape Gunworks. We got the Nighthawk Custom 9mm President in the Smoke Nitride finish. And uh, it's a pretty cool gun. Just testing out the gun. Alright. This is a test of the Cape Gunworks uh, 
gun testing program. Hey everybody, it's Toby Leary here. Hope you're doing well. Um, it's a weird time to be recording this show. <laughs> I apologize for the time change, but we're going to be uh, doing rapid fire in a bit. And uh, so we'll, we'll roll the opener in a little while. Um, but as of right now, I appreciate everyone who can join us to join us. And if you want to be a part of the chat, go ahead and uh, type your question in. Um, it's been nuts. So uh, it has been absolute pandemonium on the field in the shop because we just got a new point of sale system and it's been busy and a little bit going on. We got our ATF audit coming up on Tuesday, which is almost, it's kind of ridiculous if you think about the timing of it, because if it happened like a week ago and we were still on our old point of sale, it would have been much easier. <laughs> now we're going to the new point of sale system, new bound books, new everything. And, you know, everybody's pulling their hair out anyway. And now throw into the mix an ATF bound book audit. So, yee-hoo! The last one we had was um, a year and a half ago or whatever. And it took three months with, at some point, one agent, at some point, five agents in the building and this one on Monday uh, Tuesday excuse me they want to have one agent wrap it up in four days so it's gonna be interesting but you know I guess there's no time like the present right get it over <laughs> get it done and over with um, so we'll we'll get to some of your questions here on the show we got a busy show we got a couple guests for you it's gonna be awesome the lotto rapid fire, whatever you want to say. So we have some great inventory in the shop. We're still selling no limits on ammo. We got prices coming down, which is a good direction to come. Um, and Davey wants to know if we can mail ammo to mass now. Now, Davey, you're reading a little too far into what we said. We said we're hoping to deliver or send you ammo. That was code and you know, Professor Claw has a lot to answer to for even teasing that out. Oh, but the point is, no, I cannot mail it to you. But we have something in the works. Hello, where have you been hiding all the last two years? No, we can't mail ammo in Massachusetts. That's why you have a lot of answering to do. We'll have to get him back on for that or let's talk to him. Let's clear it up today. Yeah, we'll clear it up it's, today. It's, it's so. not that it's, again, it's not that it's, that we can't do it. It's that we The law sh that says risk. in hand at the time of sale. How do you capture it? How do you capture it in hand at the time of sale if you're doing it through the mail? We'll ask Keith again. If he wants to write a legal opinion and stand behind us when we do the perp walk, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, and a lot going on locally. I, I know you guys, uh, you know, if you've been following the news, we had an attempted murder by stabbing, which pray for the victim of that. That was, that one rang really close to home for us. We're friends with the, uh, victim in that case and uh also a guy got shot on main street um i i read an article about two or three armed robberies in the last few weeks um been crazy so uh hit and run uh you know just i know one case someone got pistol whipped in an armed robbery or something and and then somebody attempted an armed robbery and ditched the weapon and ran and it turned out to be a um turned out to be a uh airsoft or a pistol or whatever so um <clears throat> anyway the questions are rolling in and we're gonna take a lot of those on the air so i apologize for my scratchy voice in advance i have no beverage to uh we'll we'll, we'll yeah, coffee and maybe a bottle of water. Thank you. So before he, 
we go live, we'll get him, uh, get me something to drink. We also have our Veterans Top Shot Invitational. I'll plug that a couple times on the show. We really would love to have you guys come down for that. We still have some spots available. And um, <laughs> Jeff's saying we threw him off his game because we're Thursday morning. I don't even know what day it is lately because we've been working long hours. Roy's been working a lot more hours than me even on this new changeover because he's the technical guru of it. But uh, it's been just, you know, a little bit, a little bit crazy, and so you forget what day it is, forget what time it is, and what you're doing, and <laughs> so I feel bad. I had a guy deliver my truck to my other shop today, and from a friend from Ford, Belize Ford, that fixed my car, and I'm walking out to get in my car, and all of a sudden a guy has an archery question. Hour and a half later, I sell him a bow and a bunch of arrows and targets. And and then I look at my phone. Where are you? I got to go. I'm like, oh, shoot. He's been sitting at my shop for that long. I'm, I'm sorry, man. But that's the way my day goes So sometimes. So anyway, uh, we have that. The top Veterans Top Shot Invitational is going to be awesome. The Course of Fire, you have four stages of fire, 22 pistol, 22 rifle, 9mm pistol, 9mm rifle, all 50 feet. Um, and we'll provide the guns and ammo. You just got to show up and shoot. If you want to bring your gun, you can. Um, but we're, you know, you don't have to. It's not necessary. And we have lots of prizes and giveaways and raffles and all kinds of good stuff we had a little event at two brothers twin brothers pizza or two brothers pizza excuse me in uh mashby last week or tuesday and that went amazing at the car show and it was it was pretty awesome i know that uh a lot of people were there and we got some signups for the event we raised a ton of money for heroes in transition which was great. That was pretty awesome. Uh, we had our simulator there, so people would, were able to shoot the simulator, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had we had a great time. So, a lot going on, and hopefully everybody's well. Um, and you've been able to suffer with us a little bit as we figure our way out with the new point of sale system. That'll be a system that will ultimately make us a better place. Right now. It's a growing pain, not so much, um, but we'll get there. And uh, Jeff also said he liked that Twitter post with the Glock loaded chamber indicator. So that threw so many people for a loop that one guy actually came in with his Glock and he's like, how does this work with dummy rounds? And I had to physically show him and he goes, oh, and I'm like, yeah, that's why mass isn't accepting that as a loaded chamber indicator. But We'll see how it goes. I'll get with Glock and we'll see if we can make another go around. But they're once bitten, twice shy. So I think, you know, they had to put out a lot of money the last time they attempted to sell block uh, blocks, sell Glocks in Massachusetts. So we'll see it. Um, let's see. All right. Thank you, sir. Finishing an 80% lower in mass. If it's done with a pinned muzzle in stock, no bayonet lug, no grenade launcher, is that sufficient to abide by the law? As long as the 80% lower was had before 7 2016, sounds like you're in in good shape there, Frank. Um, and you didn't upset the Apple cart. Don't sweat it. Um, it was actually pretty good. I, I like that information, so it's all good. All right, and uh, Brendan wants to know if I would be able to transfer an AR-9 lower to a retired federal LEO. Yes, because an AR-9 lower is not uh, Eugene Stoner design, so therefore we will gladly do a transfer on that. And we have some in stock, so you might want to check with what we have in stock before you go ahead and buy something else. We have the nice Spikes Tactical ones, which I love. We have some KRC ones as well that are pretty nice. But anyway, all right, let's roll the opener. I'm ready if you are. Okay. I'm willing and able. All right, let's by. do it.
wrong one, sorry. I'm Toby Leary from Cape Gunworks. I'm passionate about all things Second Amendment. While I love to shoot... Going hot. There is so much more to guns than just pulling the trigger. A free and armed society is a responsible and self-reliant one. Join us to talk all things guns, freedom, and self-defense. It isn't just about being armed. It's about being responsibly armed. So load and make ready. This is Rapid Fire. Welcome everybody to Rapid Fire, brought to you by Vortex Optics. And make sure you tune in every week. Go to capegunworks.com slash rapid fire to join the conversation if you want your question to be read on the air. We will answer it. And we would love to have you join us when we record these shows. This is the last week of sign-up for the Veterans Top Shot Invitational on the 20th anniversary of September 11th. And we would love to have you there. It's going to be epic. We're going to have a great time. The golf tournament this past spring was 10 times better than expected. Everybody had a wonderful time. We raised a lot of money for two Gold Star charities here on Cape Cod, the uh, Heroes in Transition and the Nicholas G. Xaros Fund. So we want to continue to support these veterans groups now more than ever. I mean, I think with everything that's gone on in Afghanistan and all the veterans in our area that have served there, I think they need our help more than ever. And the Heroes in Transition in particular does an unbelievable job of helping these heroes and these warriors and these patriots come back and integrate back into society. They offer great programs, uh, dogs if they need them. Um, They have a great support group with other couples that are going through some of the same things. And they, you know, have equine therapy groups go out once a month. We've hosted the Heroes in Transition group at our range once. They did a range outing and that was a really cool time because a lot of the vets wanted to take their wives or their girlfriends and show them, you know, how they used to shoot and whatever. And so it was a huge event. So we love being a supporter of Heroes in Transition and we're hoping you guys will join us on September 11th from 4 to 8 p.m. The Course of Fire is you shoot four stages 22 long rifle uh, pistol, 22 rifle, 9 millimeter pistol, and 9 millimeter rifle, all at 40, um, excuse me, 50 feet, and you shoot 10 rounds in a slow fire. Uh, so you have two minutes to shoot 10 rounds, and uh, it's going to be awesome. We provide all the guns, the ammo, the eye and ear protection. If you have your own stuff and you want to bring it, more than welcome to, but by all means, we provide everything you need. And there's going to be live band. We have Pixie 103 here. We got food. We got prizes, raffles, giveaways, swag. It's going to be epic. So you don't want to miss out. It's going to be one of the best tournaments of the year. So And raise some money for these great causes. So last chance to sign up, go to TopShotInvitational.com. TopShotInvitational.com. Ideally, if you have a foursome, that's great. If you don't, just sign up as a single. You'll be placed on another team because we're going to have teams of four. And the cool thing is, if you've never even shot a gun, come and shoot. You're not going to really affect your team's score if you miss the targets because the best shooter for each stage is the team that contributes to the team score. So it's not like you're bringing everybody down. You're just going to have a good time and have fun and get a great experience and support some great charity. So we'd love to have you. This will be our third annual event, and uh, it's been better and better every year. So come on down and sign up at TopShotInvitational.com. And, or if you just want to donate and sponsor it or you know, give some money to charity, you can do that on the website as well. So uh, that would be great. we got some big sponsors this year. Um, I know Fairway Financial and uh, GFM, uh, 
es- excavating has just stepped up to the plate and become the ammo sponsor so that's huge they're footing the bill for all the ammunition that we're shooting and it's just awesome to see this uh, community come together and you know I was talking to my kids the other night uh, when we were talking about a GoFundMe for a victim of a attempted murder here on Cape Cod which this one has hit kind of close to home for us because we're friends with the, the victim and our daughter has uh, done sports with their their children and and so I I remember we were looking at the GoFundMe and all the money that's been raised and and it just resonated how wonderful the people of America are every time there's some sort of tragedy or you know major setback or big um, you know storm or something like that what happens the people rally around and they don't just give lip service but they give uh, money and time to really make the world a better place and I'm that makes me so proud to be an American and I I pointed that out to my children and I said this is just so amazing when you see how much money's been raised and you know the same goes holds true for the veterans top shot invitational every year it's bigger and bigger and we're able to give more and more to these charities that do so much for our veterans as they come back so we'd love to have you for that and thanks so much for all that you've already done um, and so we're going to get to some of your questions here. We also have uh, John Green from Gold joining us on the other side of the break. And uh, if you don't know who John Green is, he's the director of training for Gun Owners Action League. If you don't know what Gun Owners Action League is, you definitely want to go to their website. It's uh, gold.org and you want to get signed up. If you're a gun owner or you're even just a Second Amendment supporter in the People's Republic of Massachusetts, they're the group that is out on the front lines making big changes. So stick around for jo- uh, John Green on the other side. And uh, let's get to a couple of your questions uh, real quick. Uh, Brendan wants to know if we're able to s- transfer a AR-9 lower to a retired federal law enforcement officer in Massachusetts. And the answer to that is yes, it's not a... Uh, Eugene Stoner design. It's a totally different operating system and different magwell and everything else. So that's not a problem at all. Uh, We'd be happy to do that. And uh, Jeff was saying he likes the Twitter post with the Glock loaded chamber indicator. So if you haven't seen that yet, you got to go on twitter.com and check out Cape Gunworks. We haven't been banned yet. I don't know if we have to step up our game. But we haven't been banned off Twitter yet. It's amazing. So one of the social media platforms that still allows us on there. And um, so, yeah, check out that whole discussion around the Glock loaded chamber indicator. And uh, Frank wants to know about finishing an 80% lower in mass. If he does it with a pin muzzle in stock, no bayonet lug, no grenade launcher, no foldy stuff or collapsible stuff on it. None of those evil features that would make that gun an assault weapon. Is that sufficient to abide by the law? And I would say yes, as long as the 80%er was acquired prior to 7-2016, uh, you should be good to go. So that's my advice there. Um so Daryl said he literally just popped in and got some range time, got some ammo, and drooled a little over that SL8. It's hard for me to settle on a 223, but he sure loves it. Well, you know what's funny, Daryl, is this SL8 has lasted longer than the prior shipment of, I think I got five in the first shipment. And those five la- you know, went out the door quick, and the one SL8 that I got as a follow-up has lasted a week. So it is still available, and... If you want a great HK for a great price, it's I think it's fifteen ninety nine, and what HK rifle is under two grand? I mean, it's just unheard of. So it's a pretty cool gun, and I get that it's only a two two three, but it's a designated marksman rifle. It's meant for accuracy, not necessarily a battle rifle. So it's a pretty cool gun. You might have to come down and check it out. Get another look at it. Just hold it, play with it and it'll rent space in your head and you'll take it home. All right, if you're hearing this and you don't have your gun license, we have regularly scheduled LTC classes. We have ladies only and couples classes at capegunworks.com. John Green is from Goal is next, so stick around. We'll be right back. I'm Toby, you're listening to Rapid Fire.
If you crave versatility in a tactical reticle, the new ARBDC3 delivers with a host of features you need to adapt in the field. A 1 MOA center dot provides a precise point of aim, while the surrounding 16 MOA open circle helps get your eye into the center faster for rapid target acquisition in close quarters. The ARBDC3 also adapts to a variety of light conditions. The center dot and surrounding open circle illuminate for low light shooting, and because the reticle is glass etched, it can also function without any illumination. When you need to go long, the upper ranging feature allows you to range silhouette targets out to 600 yards, while the bullet drop compensator, or BDC, keeps you on target out to 650 yards. Plus, you get wind holds for 5, 10, and 15 mile per hour winds. The ARBDC3 is specifically tuned to the ballistic performance of most common 5.56 loads out of an AR-15. There are resources in the reticle manual for conversions to 308, and as with any BDC, information gathered from a chronograph and ballistics calculator can adapt these hash marks to any other caliber and its own unique ballistic curve. From point blank to way down range, adapt with the ARBDC3. All right, welcome back to Rapid Fire. This is Toby Leary, your host, co-owner of Cape Gunworks. And remember to go to our website, capegunworks.com, and click on Rapid Fire so you can get notified whenever we air this show. And I'm really happy to have in studio with us today, John Green, who is from Gun Owners Action League. Thanks for being with us, John. Always a pleasure, friend. Always a pleasure. So, John, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what Goal does? I'm a long-standing member, and I've done lots of training with Goal. But why don't you go ahead and give us a the thirty thousand foot view of what Goal? Yeah, does. happy to do so. So Goal was created or born back in 1974, and it resulted from a ballot question that would have prohibited the lawful ownership of handguns in Massachusetts. And we took that that clout that was built and became the NRA State Firearms Association. So ultimately, what we do now is we we represent the people trying to be lawful gun owners in Massachusetts. We used to say the lawful gun owners of Massachusetts, but I don't know too many people that are being able to be 100% compliant with the with the absurdity and, and, and the variables in our gun laws. So we represent the people trying to be lawful in the eyes of the general public, in, in the judiciary, in the legislature. We lobby, we educate. Currently, we're up to about 19,000 members statewide. We have a staff of, let's see here now, we have five people on staff finally. Jim Wallace, our executive director. Angela Fisher, who's our big toe and chief of staff, keeps the keeps the shop running. We have Mike Harris, who we're very excited about. He's our new public policy guy, former state aide to uh, the minority whip, worked in the state house, worked for DCR and fire services. Just a real knowledgeable guy. Jake Zandi is our communications manager. And then finally, I've been with Goal since 1999, training the trainers, NRA TC liaison for the state with Rick City, also educate thousands of people every year on Massachusetts gun law and teach lots of small arms training. So awesome. very busy, small staff, and, and uh, we answer a lot of questions for both members and non-members and, and try, to, try to put a good foot forward for those of uh, folks that aren't involved in Second Amendment civil rights issues. Yeah, I mean, you guys are obviously doing amazing work here in Massachusetts in a, in a state that's very hostile to gun ownership. Very much and, so. And as you just pointed out, you know, you used to hear the saying all the time, ignorance is no excuse for not knowing the law. Well, <laughs> except in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, except in Massachusetts when sure. it comes to guns. There should be a big asterisk next to that right Very there. Very true. Very true. Because I've been selling guns actively for seven years and I've been a shooter since I was 12. And I still... I mean, you know, I call you all the time. Absolutely. Go, what the heck should I do with this or you, this or that? And you you pull out a chapter and verse of the Mass General Law and whatever and help me. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's ever-changing. You almost have to have a, a lawyer on call at your disposal if you're going to be a gun <laughs> We have a few of them. Yeah, we right. have a few of them. Boy, and we've been using them a lot lately. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's clear as mud mm -hmm. in Massachusetts as far as what you can do, what you can't do, and, and especially on this show, our frequently asked questions a lot of times are very repetitive that we get asked a lot of the same questions. Of, why can't I buy a Glock? You know, exactly. why can't I? So it's just all over the map and really hard to discern. And 
frankly, at some point, you wonder if that's done on purpose. That's a fair question. That's absolutely a fair question. Depending on who you ask, they're going to say it has to be done on on purpose. The fact of the matter is, listen, we've been at it since 1934, the National Firearms Act, and it seems like the state has always tried to one-up the Fed. We have very fragmented laws. We have different meanings of items from one chapter to another chapter. Stuff has been redacted over the years. It's When I do these gun law classes, I hold up a blank sheet of paper and I say, all right, this is New Hampshire gun law, right? (laughs) And that's not, you know, 100%. But New Hampshire and a lot of these constitutional carry states, they defer to the feds on all things guns. Massachusetts, not so much. I mean, we're one of the only states that has secured storage statutes with criminal penalties. We're one of the only states that require a special license to exercise your Second Amendment choices to, to possess an empty cartridge case. Right. We are not the norm. We are not the norm. And unless you're in the Second Amendment civil rights community in here, you think every state has a requirement to have a gun license, and every state requires you to lock up guns, and if you don't, then you can go to jail for that. Mm. It's uh, There's a lot of ignorance out there, a lot of ignorance with law enforcement, with a person trying to be law-abiding, with, with retailers, and that's, no, that's not a, a slap in the face or any disrespect. It's just really ill illustrates the confusion that Massachusetts gun law is. Right. You bring up a good point about, you know, I had a friend who actually had an empty shell case driveway. (laughs) (laughs) So you think about like uh, people put clamshells and put pebbles and he wanted empty shell casings. That is awesome. (laughs) He used to police the brass at the range and he'd bring it over and dump it in the driveway and spread it. And it was awesome. And we were joking one day that if a tourist or somebody walks by or a kid walks by and picks up one of those empty shell casings and walks away, they're now in violation of mass law. 100%. Yeah. It it can't get any more idiotic than that. And the fact that, like, I remember going to the local Army Navy store as a kid and you could reach in the bucket and buy 50, you know, spent brass cartridges, you know, and just take them home and collect them all, you know, that type of thing. Now you're in violation of mass general I love it when we see the veterans passing out the fired cartridge cases out of the M1s and the A303s at the parades to the little kids. One side of me says, that is America. That is so awesome. The other side of me, breaking the law, breaking the law, (laughs) you know, furnishing ammunition components to a minor. (laughs) And this is the stuff that comes as a result of politicians saying, we need common sense gun laws. This is common sense. Yeah. Common sense would be to keep that <laughs> evildoer, you know, right. off the streets. 100%. Keep that person in jail, and, and we don't see that. We know that there are elected officials that don't want to put people in jail. We have prosecutors and, and DAs that don't want to prosecute minor crimes, or even in some cases major crimes. It's it's hurtful. It really, really is. And here, here we are just trying to exercise our Second Amendment civil rights and, and not violate any of the laws or the regulations in process. It's... It's unbelievably frustrating as as responsible gun owners, sure. as you pointed out earlier, how all of gun crime or gun violence is laid at our feet by sure. the people who think that they're doing the right thing and trying to save the save people from the threat of, you know, the evil gun owner. But in reality, gun owners are less likely to create c- commit a crime or less likely to commit felonies violent you know crime and whatnot then non-gun owners statistics show that we are more i forget who did the study it was probably something out of national shooting sports foundation where we have to remember very few states require a licensing like massachusetts so a great majority of states you want to buy a rifle or shotgun be 18 not prohibited by law you want to buy a handgun be 21 not prohibited by law you want to carry that handgun yes there were up to what may be 29 states that require a license to carry a handgun outside your home for your protection. But other than that, you don't need a license to own or use guns, mm. right? But but that's not the case in Massachusetts. Absolutely maddening. So this statistic basically said that those in the United States that do have a concealed carry permit, or if you're from Massachusetts, you have a gun permit, we are more law-abiding than law enforcement. Mm. Wow. We are literally the most law-abiding segment of the population. Yeah, and so it gets very old for us to sure. hear in the in the news that the only way we're going to prevent gun violence is to further restrict the people who aren't prone to <laughs> right. committing violence or crime exactly. in the first place. It's maddening. Yeah. It's absolutely maddening. So 
what have you been doing in the last year or so personally for goal? You've been uh, doing some training and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like everybody else, we have been putting forth, I don't know how many Zoom classes. And again, I specialize in gun law and working with that certified state police basic firearm safety instructor so that they understand the, the policies, you know, the statutes under 131P and the accompanying regulations. That's taken up a lot of my time. But most often I talk to the goal member or the non-goal member saying, can I buy this? Or can I do this to my gun? Or I'm going out of state, what do I do? So I spend the time answering, providing citations because I'm not attorney. I don't give out legal information, any legal advice or any of that. I provide them to the statutes, citations, regulations, what have you. And then if they need to speak to an attorney, you know, Goal works with about 20 different attorneys statewide. And uh, hopefully if they need a written opinion, legal opinion, then they can get it from there. Goal as a whole, we've been involved in a lot of lawsuits uh, working with SAF, Com2A, FPC. There's some good lawsuits going. Very excited, very excited about some of them that are on the table now. Yeah, I'm really excited about the one that's pending here in Massachusetts. FPC, uh, you know, filed a lawsuit here challenging the whole mass approved weapons roster absolutely phenomenal what a lot of people don't know toby way back and i'm i've been with with goal since 1999 i think about 2001 after attorney general scott harshbarger created these goal spent i remember seeing that the check made payable to the state fourteen thousand dollars on freedom of information let me tell you something information is not free (laughs) i'll tell you that so we went and we investigated we looked through the sticky pads the emails the inner office communications of the attorney general scott harshbarger and his staff on on why they created this this uh, consumer protection regulation 940 60 cmr 16.00 and um, it had zero to do with uh, reducing crime zero to reduce accidents its whole intent and they've been amazingly successful is reducing the number of of lawfully manufactured firearms handguns in massachusetts for citizen purchase right and and nobody wanted to do anything nobody in the massachusetts state legislature legislature wanted to touch that information nobody on the federal side of things wanted to touch that information so we put it up on our website we made it available to other state associations we talked to various attorneys nobody could or wanted to do anything along comes FPC about a year ago uh, Rob Pink has said hey what do you know can you help these guys huh? like has, have they talked to anybody from go they talked with Jim did they know the expose we did on the AG years ago and we sent that down to them and hopefully that will make hey they were very impressed impressed with that document Hold that thought. I want to get back to this on the other side. We'll be right back. You're listening to John Green from Goal and Toby Leary from Rapid Fire. We'll be right back. All right, well. This is the Voltec VT-10i. It's your travel buddy, so it goes where you go. To your work, on the road, or at the range. It's the smart and rugged safe built to protect, no matter what you trust it with. We've made sure every inch of your safe is built to the highest possible standards. Security is at the forefront of our thoughts, so no unwanted guest. The VT-10i provides multiple quick and simple access points, including high-resolution biometrics, backlit numeric keys, keyed entry, and even your smartphone for remote access. The two-point anti-impact latches keep your safe strong, and Voltec lithium-ion battery charges in just 2.5 hours and lasts up to six months. So it won't let you down. There's a reason we're the number one rated biometric safe. Get yours at VoltecSafe.com and find us online at Facebook.com slash VoltecSafe. May your tag of a lifetime finally come through. May the snow pile up and the elk come down. May your socks always stay dry. May the herd bull finally break from the herd. And may your aim always stay true. Welcome to the next level. Welcome to the Vortex.
All right, welcome back to Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Toby Leary, and join us every week. Go to capegunworks.com, click on Rapid Fire, and you'll be notified when we go live and record these shows, or you can listen to us on various radio stations or wherever you find your podcast. We podcast all the shows, and we also archive them on our own website. So before we get back to that question, John, how do we support Gold? You can visit Gold's website at gold.org. All sorts of buttons on that page to make donations, to join. Most importantly, aside from joining, we need advocacy. We need advocates. We need people that will reach out to their elected officials, whether those elected officials believe in our Second Amendment civil rights, aren't familiar with our Second We need people that are willing to talk to their elected officials. Mm-hmm. Listen, we have close to a half a million licensed gun owners in this state, and I would say of the you know the eighteen or 19,000 goal members, only 1% or 2% of those are advocates, mm-hmm. people that will reach out to their state reps and state senators, their local elected officials, to say, I need you to take a further look at this. Here's why I disagree with you. I want you to take a closer look at these things. Or when they do right by you, just a simple thank you. When they do wrong by you, let them know respectfully why you disagree with them. It's amazing when we talk with, with folks in the legislature that how that written thank you card over an email or text really gains traction. A, a personal a phone call goes a long way. We have to do keep in mind the state house, the people's house is still closed because of COVID. It's still closed, but mm-hmm. yet they are business as usual. There are hearings. Goal was involved in a hearing uh, several weeks ago done by Zoom and we got very little notice and they had I think 160 bills and they were only allowing what two and a half three hours worth of zoom think of that so 160 divide they were giving each bill each potential law a minute and a half to be discussed that is absolutely disgusting yeah we need more That's people crazy. to pick up the phone and write a letter that's what we need great well they can do that uh you can certainly on your website help them get in touch with their legislature yes we have all sorts of links for that find their legislature we're also beginning our in-person lobbying classes or i should say more correctly advocacy classes where we bring in an elected state rep or senator to come in and talk about this is how you can help us help you don't Mm -hmm. be afraid to make a phone call don't be afraid to call your your elected official and voice your opinion and and people People want to do the right thing. I truly believe that. Sure. They just don't know where to start. And that's one of one of Goal's educational programs. Lastly, along this point, um, obviously a well-crafted email or phone call is much better than a form letter that you could get from... 100%. So many of those just go right into the circular file. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to delete an email. Not sure. easy to just, you know, throw away a handwritten letter. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Getting back to what we were just talking about, the Firearms Policy Coalition comes along... You yeah. put them in touch with, well, at least the, the information. information, and uh, they immediately file a lawsuit, right? Yes. I mean, so they had clear. filed the lawsuit, and then speaking with Rob Pincus, Rob's like, hey, listen, I want you to call, I think it's Dan, and uh, reached out to Dan, said, Dan, he, he, this is who I am, this is what I have, let me get you the file down. Anybody can see this file, it's on our webpage, sure. and they were very impressed with, with how uh, accurate was and the information that it contains so hopefully they can make hay with it when when goal couldn't right and i think if you look wasn't the law challenged at one point uh the the whole consumer protection act i think it was challenged at some point along the way i i I couldn't speak articulately on that but i think it was done kind of half acre if you yeah fair enough absolutely And, and from what I hear anyway. And so I have a lot of trust with Firearms Policy yes. Coalition. We donate to them. We, you know, I personally give to them and, and uh, they've been great. They step in and did a lot of good, even when we were closed down during COVID sure. restrictions, they helped with the lawsuit. I agree. Here. My money, yeah. SAF, FPC, absolutely. Yeah. And so I I think they're going to come with some big guns and they're not going to do this in a half acre, you know, manner, mm-hmm. half baked manner. I think they'll, but I'm really hoping that it'll be easy to just show how many people really are discriminated against in this state from purchasing the gun that they actually want. Absolutely. Like you can't tell me that um, if I want to buy, you know, a, a nice Kimber 1911 or something like that and say, oh, well, you can go buy a auto ordinance or you could go buy a Ruger, you know, SR 1911, which are good guns. Sure, don't get no me wrong. Doubt. But 
the fact of the matter is, if this is the one I want, the whole concept of the Constitution, right to bear arms, and even in, I think it was the Heller decision or McDonald said, it's those that are common and ordinary to the people, like the ones that the people want. Exactly. Are the ones that look at the lower income folks, right? That may not be able to afford that Kimber. Right. But they're looking at a a lesser model, a two or three hundred dollar gun. A Taurus or a, you know, a, a, a sky or a pistol that, you know, might be. 300 bucks Mm -hmm. and we can't even sell them here because they say no and on a very arbitrary set of standards and i don't even think they could point to somebody being killed in the process of using the gun because again it has nothing to do with safety nothing to do with the with reducing crime it has everything to do when they've been amazingly successful at this Mm. reducing the number of lawfully manufactured items in this case handguns to uh, non-prohibited people so i my hats off to fpc and and i wish them you know godspeed how can goal help and and we we stepped up pretty good with with lots of good information so i'm optimistic on this the wheel of justice as we know turn extremely slow it's so slow Mm -hmm. it's painful and you know along those lines even the whole pending legislation challenging Maura Healy on 7 2016 we're basically back at square one peg one correct 100 percent. so what a lot of people don't know is we got that with the with the help of saf second amendment foundation we got that case all the way up to the supreme court and in june of 2019 they declined to hear that case along with about 10 other second amendment civil rights related uh, cases right and we were arguing that the Massachusetts Assault Weapons Ban, Chapter 140, Section 131M, violated our Second Amendment civil rights. Mm-hmm. So that was the that was the the premise of the case. It was the Worman versus Healy case, and uh, it was just a heartbreaker. All that time, all that energy, all the de- depositions, the money, the mm-hmm. money. I was talking with Jim Wallace on the way down here today. We we've put forth about eighty thousand dollars in the past five years from goal that's membership dollars and donations to get that case up to the supreme court uh, i know the nra stepped forward they wrote a lot of big checks for that the amicus briefs that we've been involved with it's just who's winning here right well that's the part that's so frustrating is you know you hear the saying elections have consequences which is 100 percent true 100 percent true it takes a moment you just mentioned the legislature can pass a new bill every minute and a half after debate of a minute and a half <laughs> debate. And you think about what they're changing. They're changing the very fabric and fiber of our country every time they change a law or whatever and implement common sense gun legislation. And it takes, in some cases, a decade. Decades or more. Or more. Not to mention hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. Not to mention the man hours and the lobbying together and the the organization involved to change that decision that took place in a moment of time on Capitol Hill or Beacon Hill. Sure. That now is going to take decades to write. Toby, think of how many scholastic or or a JV or varsity rifle teams we could have equipped throughout the United States. Good kids. You show me a kid that's good on the range, I'll show you a great student. More importantly, I'll show you a great adult five or ten years later. Mm. Right? All this wasteful money. Yeah. Wasteful money. It's hurt. Why? Because we didn't have the advocacy. Yeah. And all just to maintain what we already have or try to win back the stuff that has been taken away from mm-hmm. us. You know? I don't think there's too many people that would argue that when the Constitution was written and the Bill of Rights was written and they acknowledged every person's right to keep and bear arms, it wasn't government granting us that right. It came, they acknowledged the basic human right. Exactly. And they expanded on it to say, this is really to keep tyranny in check. Like we had just sent the British back across the pond saying, that's what happens when you come for our guns. And yet here we are 200 and something thousand years later, I mean 200 something years later, and now we're having to refight that battle in the very state where it was originally started. It all started here, Connecticut (laughs) Valley, when they weren't building musical instruments on that same water-powered machinery. They were turning barrels and stocks. It all started right here in the Connecticut Valley. Yeah, rich heritage and Mm -hmm. history. I was just at Smith & Wesson in June 
and you know you look across these unbelievable i mean if that town could talk in, in the history it, it could tell you know with all of the big major manufacturers and even the smaller ones like exactly. you said it's it's amazing the history and that we have right here in this com- uh, state. And, and on that note, we should throw a, sh- a shout out to Springfield Armory, mm-hmm. right? We still have a national park that the history of, of, of firearms in this nation is all held in, in such beautiful display at that Springfield Armory. So I urge everybody in listening land, to, if they can get to out, out to Springfield, visit the Springfield Armory. We should do a field trip. That would be great. I'll, yeah. I'll get a bus. Yeah, we should definitely <laughs> do, do that. that. We've talked about stuff like that at Goal. Yeah. You know, get a bus, go go hit the, the Springfield Armory, take a tour of Smith & Wesson, or go up to Epping, take a tour of, of Sig Sauer. I mean, there's still a lot of industry, firearms-related yeah. industry in, in Massachusetts and New Savage England. Savage is right there. That's and, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, that would be amazing. We should definitely do that. that we'll would, put that on the planning block. Yeah, no doubt about it. And have you as our tour guide. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I want to be at the back of the bus. <laughs> Maybe you could uh, get, you know. I'll uh, drive. <laughs> We'd have to get uh, Jared from uh, Guns and Gadgets. To, uh, so Jared and I took the USCCA instructor training together in Mansfield a few months ago. What a great guy he is. What a, an absolute hero, articulate, smart as a whip, mm. and a hell of a shot. So mm. he and I are going to try to throw together a couple of classes together. for That'd the be great. Uh, yeah. yeah. One of the we, great uh, ones. I met him at the Rotary standout we had down here. Yes. He came all the way down to support gun yeah. stores during the closure. Yeah. yeah from and he Douglas. came down for that. And so... We're trying to get him on the show, but we might have a bad email or something. So if you're out there, Jared. <laughs> I'll, I'll send him a text <laughs> on the way text. home. Yeah, there you go. And uh, But that would be great. We'd love to have him on. And uh, it's great that another Massachusetts guy is out doing such great work. For mm-hmm. I mean, the service that And a he police offers. officer. Right. And a police officer. Yeah. And, you know, I think the service that he does is very niche like it's awesome there's not too many people no that's why i think his channel is so successful is is how you know he's right on it i mean something changes overnight next day he's got a a, a video about it yes so, yeah so it, he's doing a great job and you know behind the enemy lines here and hopefully uh you know more people will be inspired to to you know call and advocate for what we need here um in massachusetts because it's going to be kicking the ball up the hill for a while no yes very much it. very much the optimist in me says look at all the people taking training classes applying for their license heck we just settled mediation with the city of boston they were 200 uh, 2500 applications in the rears people have been uh, trying to apply simply lawfully own a gun in boston for over a year and it took another court action again saf uh, jason guided uh, dave jensen stepped forward and uh, settled it through mediation boston said okay we promise we promise we'll we'll get through 2500 applicants by october unbelievable isn't it crazy all right well that's all the time we have with john green thanks so much And if you're looking for legal protection, text CGWMA to 281-603-0066. Text CGWMA to 281-603-0066 for a special offer on U.S. Law Shield. We'll be right back. You're listening to Rapid Fire. Nobody thinks it will happen to them, but with over 2,000 emergency phone calls per month to our independent program attorney answered hotline, it's closer to home than you think. At U.S. Law Shield, we give you exclusive access to our 24-7, 365 emergency hotline, not a call center, direct access to our network of independent program attorneys. With a price point of only $10.95 per month and unlimited attorney hours for criminal and civil defense, U.S. Law Shield provides you with unparalleled service and protection where it matters most. No other program comes close. We believe an educated member is an empowered member. We do this by providing educational resources featuring seasoned attorneys, firearms instructors, law enforcement, and experts in all areas we at U.S. Law Shield believe peace of mind should come with simple and affordable protection. Welcome back to 
Rapid Fire. This is your host, Toby Leary, and I want to thank John Green for coming down and making the drive. It's not a walk across the street for him to be in studio, and we really appreciate him doing that. Uh, He's a great patriot and a great advocate for us here for the Second Amendment in Massachusetts. If you're not a member of Goal, believe me, you want to join and let your money go to work for us here in the People's Republic of Massachusetts because they are doing great work for us. And Jim Wallace, as well, who's the executive director of Goal, just got elected to the board of directors um, on the NRA. So that's huge to get a good kind of outside voice coming in and breaking up the good old boys club a little bit at the NRA. And I'm really happy one of our own homegrown Jim uh, Wallace has been elected. Uh, So that's awesome. I'm really happy about that. So put your money to work for us here in the state and join Goal Gun Owners Action League. And they collaborate with a lot of good groups like COM2A and Firearms Policy Coalition, 2AO, um, you know, and so NSSF, NRA, and they're doing a lot of good work out there. So, all right, we're going to get back to some of your questions. I know that was a long two segments with John, but on the other hand, it was very worthwhile to get him into the into the studio here and and get and get some good conversation going with him. So, Daryl mentions that in the hometown parade every year, the men fire and the kids scramble for the brass. It's the oldest parade in the nation, and that's a tradition. Um, so yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, Brandon was pointing out what. You know, with the laws so confusing, what what's the over-under for the elected politicians who, who underwent firearms training and understand how guns work? And I say it's probably very low, very few, uh, very few and far between. Even if you've shot a gun once or twice, doesn't mean you understand how guns work. So it's it's one of those things, you know, it just, it just uh, you don't understand the interworkings of guns unless you're a gun person. So it's kind of like me opining on you know rocket construction (laughs) rocket scientists would laugh at me if i try to you know sit here and explain to people how rockets should work or what parts should be regulated or the ignition systems or yeah it'd be a big you know (laughs) because i don't know anything about it but i also don't go out and try to say we need common sense rocket legislation and start writing laws like politicians do so i digress you know you can't fix stupid but that's the way it works sometimes there are some good politicians in the state uh representative tim whalen who by the way is going to make a an appearance at the veterans top shot invitational so i'm just throwing out another plug for that if you want to join us there he'll be there between four and five o'clock He's a great patriot, former Marine, former state trooper, and uh, now a state rep. And I got to say, when a few years ago when I went to the state house and knocked on a lot of doors to try to meet with politicians and meet with Charlie Baker and meet with um, a lot of the, you know, people who write laws and gun laws in the state, for the most part, it was a lot of empty offices Uh, But there was Tim Whalen working hard, and he immediately cleared out a spot for me to sit down and talk to me for as long as I needed to. And he goes, look, you're preaching to the choir. He lifted up his shirt and showed me a a Smith & Wesson shield that he had on his side, and he said, I bought this at your gun store, by the way. (laughs) So I was like, wow, that's great. That's awesome. But, um, you know, he's a big Second Amendment supporter, and... We need more politicians like him. So uh, let's see how it goes and uh, elect more people just like him. So that would be great. Uh, Kevin says, thank you, FPC and Goal. Keep up the fight for Massachusetts, please. Absolutely, and I know they will. The mass roster needs to be abolished, fundamental rights, Kevin says. I agree with you 100%, Kevin. It is a backdoor gun ban, and like John Green said, has nothing to do with your personal safety. It was not trying to make you safer as a citizen of Massachusetts, especially when you think about uh, that they couldn't point to anybody who had killed themselves in the proper use of a firearm because that gun was considered unsafe. 
because it didn't have a loaded chamber indicator or something like that. When you are using a gun properly and you've been trained in the safe and efficient use of the firearm, you understand some universal safety rules around firearms, then guns don't just jump out of the, their place and kill people. It's not the way it works. So the whole premise of the Consumer Protection Act as it relates to firearms is flawed, should be done away with, should be deemed unconstitutional 100% right off the gate and let's hope fpc is successful in doing that all right make sure you take a lesson come get a one-on-one -on -one instruction tailored to you we have lessons for pistol rifle and shotgun you can test out other guns go to capegunworks.com slash privates if you want to take a private lesson with one of our instructors we'll get you going all right we'll be right back on the other side you're listening to rapid fire i'm toby Lear. Made in America since 1949. Family owned and operated. Legendary performance. This is Hornady. May your tag of a lifetime finally come through. May the snow pile up and the elk come down. May your socks always stay dry. May the herd bull finally break from the herd, and may your aim always stay true. Welcome to the next level. Welcome to the Vortex. Snap Safe, featuring a pry-resistant 3 16th inch solid steel door, 2300 degree Fahrenheit one hour fire shield protection, and a lifetime warranty. Snap Safe, a modular safe with welded safe security. All right, welcome back to Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Toby Leary, and join us every week. Go to capegunworks.com, click on Rapid Fire, get signed up, be notified when we go live. And then we're going to record the show for airing on three different radio stations. Currently, we're on WXDK, WRKO, and WCRN. And we would love to have you listen to us there as well. You can also listen wherever you find your podcasts and download the Rapid Fire podcast. So... Well, you can find us wherever you want if you're willing to look a little bit, but you can always just go to capegunworks.com and click on rapid fire. Getting back to a couple of your questions here. Um, Hustle says, I appreciate Cape Gunworks for all the help when we have questions or concerns about firearms. And he appreciates anyone who salutes, uh, who stands up for our 2A rights. Salute to goal. And uh, do we have any classes to help them get comfortable shooting an AR? The answer is yes. In September, we have a lot of classes. You can always do a private lesson, like I said on the, before the break. But we also have a carbine class coming up this month. It's been a while since I've done a carbine class. And uh, you'll be taking that class with yours truly. And uh, my time to teach classes has been greatly diminished. But I am doing two classes in uh, September. We're doing an intuitive defensive shooting class, which is sold out, and I'm doing defensive carbine fundamentals on September 21st. It's a 9 to 5 class. You'll be shooting about 400 rounds and uh, out of your long gun. You'll need a sling, 3 or 4 magazines, 400 rounds of ammo, iron ear protection, and we will get you rocking and rolling, so that'll be awesome. So I'd get signed up for that class. There's still some space available in that. And uh, Stephen says, I'm all for, oh, oh, he's got a quote here. I'm all for the Second Amendment, but I just don't think civilians should be able to own private firearms. Hmm, who do you think said that? I don't know. I've never seen that quote, but he he likens that one to Joe Biden, which, I you know, I've heard Joe Biden say some very uh, divisive stuff when it comes to Second Amendment. Uh, you know, nobody needs a 9 millimeter that holds more than 10 rounds. So, you know, he's coming against handguns. He's coming against assault weapons. He's the first politician to really come after handguns, if you think about it. A 9 millimeter handgun is the most common and ordinary gun in the United States. And to say nobody needs that if it can hold more than 10 rounds is ridiculous. 
but that's how politicians feel about you responsible gun owners being legally and lawfully armed in America. Um, so let's see a uh, couple other things in the news. Uh, another three-letter agency has been activated against guns. So Ammo Land wrote an article how the CDC is now coming against firearms and their criminal misuse of firearms. And they have not contacted or reached out to any group of Second Amendment group like NSSF or industry leader on this subject. But they want to look at the criminal and negligent misuse of firearms that results in death. And they say it's, you know, an epidemic that is sweeping our cities. And the criminal misuse always results when you're talking about agencies or politicians trying to fix the problem. It always results in res further restrictions on the people that aren't the problem, like we talked about ad nauseum with John a couple segments ago. So that's usually where this, you know, it, it, it's further restrictions on responsible gun owners. If you look at what the industry is doing, we have Hold My Guns, we have, uh, you know, the a bunch of mental health organizations out there that are um, that are helping people have outlets to get mental health screenings when it, you know without uh, any negative impact about them becoming a firearm you know continuing as a firearms owner. We have uh, Walk the Talk America, which is a great f fundamental organization designed to help people in the intersection of guns and mental health, and you know remove the stigma that. It's not okay to ask for help. It is okay to ask for help. And you shouldn't be penalized in your ability to exercise your right to keep and bear arms because you're asking for help. If you're going through a tough time or you have, you know, you're suffering from some sort of uh, PTSD or something like that. There's groups out there that are doing amazing work. And I would say the industry has really risen to the challenge and started to... Um, protect and police its own, if you will, and offer great resources for people who want to, you know, get further help or education or psychological evaluation or, you know, get the gun out of their hands while they're going through some stuff. And we've done it a million times for people here at the shop when people come in and say, hey, I'm going through a divorce. I don't know how this is going to go. I just want to get the guns out of the house. And you know, my hat's off to people who have the responsibility of doing that and protecting and securing their firearms while they go through a shaky time or process. And these people aren't necessarily coming in because they're afraid they're going to use the gun on, you know, their spouse. They're they're more getting it out because they're afraid their spouse is going to take out a restraining order and they don't want to have a gun in the house. You know, and this restraining order has been used as a bludgeon or a... Uh, uh, tool to really get back at their spouse and the fact that they're taking this out kind of illegally because there really was no threat in the first place they're just using it as a a tool to get back at their spouse knowing that they have firearms and they'll have them seized immediately if if a restraining order is granted and if a woman goes to a court and says my husband's abusive I need to take out a restraining order what what judge is going to deny that and say, nah, you're making it up, you know? So there's penalties for doing that um, kind of illegally when there really isn't a threat. But frankly, no one's going to let that be on their conscience that some woman petitioned the court for a restraining order and it wasn't granted because they thought they were they were making it up. And they don't want that to take that chance. So they usually grant the restraining order and then whether it's, you know, legitimate or not. But there's a lot of people that are smart enough to say, hey, I'm just going to get the guns out of the house at this time in the first place. And we've helped people store their guns and whatnot. So the industry is doing a phenomenal job. So for the CDC to jump in and now say, we're going to study this and we're going to do this and we're going to try to figure out what's causing this gun violence and crime and whatnot. 
you know, it doesn't take a lot, uh, you know, a four year law student to figure out what the heck is causing this crime. It's as John Green pointed out, it's the fact that we don't lock up criminals. If you lock up a criminal, they can't go out and repeat offend. But the problem is we don't like to do that in this day and age. It's not gentle and kind to lock away violent offenders for any type of uh, duration of time. So the Biden administration has activated another agency, the CDC, to level its sights at the Second Amendment. He's already done it with the ATF. He's done it with the uh, Department of Congress and the State Department. So, I mean, uh, the Department of Commerce, excuse me, and the State Department. So, yeah, there you go. All right. Well, that's the end of this show for the first hour anyway. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, the show ends here but goes on for another hour. So tune in at capegunworks.com slash rapid fire. Join us on the range or hear extended answers to your Second Amendment questions. So if you're signing off, we'll see you next week. If you're sticking around, we'll be right back. I'm Toby Leary. God bless. See you next time. May your tag of a lifetime finally come through. May the snow pile up and the elk come down. May your socks always stay dry. May the herd bull finally break from the herd. And may your aim always stay true. Welcome to the next level. Welcome to the Vortex. Alexander Hamilton said, those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. This is Toby from Cape Gunworks. When our founding fathers drafted the Second Amendment, there was no question of its meaning. Today, if you have questions, come to Cape Gunworks for some advice, training, or to send a few rounds downrange. We have a fully stocked pro shop with a huge selection of guns, crossbows, archery, classes, rentals, a 15-lane range, and a friendly staff. Come on down to Cape Gunworks Airport Road Hyannis or capegunworks.com. All right, welcome to Rapid Fire, sponsored by Vortex Optics. I'm your host, Toby Leary. And join us every week. Go to capegunworks.com, click on Rapid Fire. You're in the bonus hour. If you made it this far, we thank you. And uh, we love talking to you guys every week, and we also love taking your questions on the chat. So you want to make sure you sign up at capegunworks.com slash rapid fire to join the conversation. You can type your question into the chat. You can also call into the show. And uh, stick around next hour. We, I mean, excuse me, next segment, we have uh, attorney Keith Langer. We're going to ask him some questions, find out what he's been up to. And uh, so, yeah, join us every week. It changes every week. This show is the ebb and flow of what is going on in the Second Amendment world out there. We do all things guns, uh, training, self-defense and sometimes politics. You know, sometimes you can't ignore politics as it relates to guns. I, We don't get overly political at the shop. I don't really care who you voted for. If you want a gun, I'm going to help you get a gun. At the end of the day, though, I hope that as a gun owner, you will start to hold your personally elected or the guys you voted for responsible for the way they treat your rights. Because rights are fundamental to you as an American. And if you want those to be changed or you want laws for me and not for thee, that type of thing, then, you know, that's up to you. But you're really not a Second Amendment supporter at that point. You just claim to support the Second Amendment, but you vote in a way that undermines your own words. If you're going to Vote for people, hold them accountable at the ballot box, and don't give them that second term. Don't give them another bite at the apple if they don't respect your basic fundamental rights. 
The Second Amendment is woven into the very fabric of our country for a reason, and it has nothing to do with grandpa's deer rifle. It has nothing to do with you even being able to defend yourself against a violent attacker. It has nothing to do with being able to duck hunt or collect memorabilia. It has 100% everything to do with making sure that our government doesn't turn on us and become tyrannical. Everybody in the past few years who has been, I'm, I'm, up, I'm up on my soapbox, uh, everyone who has been calling for common sense gun control, why can't we do what Australia did? I like Australia. They banned handguns. They banned high capacity assault weapons. But you can still buy a 22 rifle to plink on the farm. And you can have a shotgun to shoot the occasional wild bird or pig or something like that. And that's how they view the Second Amendment. They think it's just about being able to hunt or plink on the farm. But the bottom line is, guess what's happening right now in Australia? They're allowed to go out of their house for a half an hour a day if you live in South Wales. You go out for a half an hour a day. And the government just said, guys, you're doing this really good. If you keep it up, we'll let you out for an hour a day. We're going to let you outside for a little exercise up to an hour per day. And by the way, if you say, hey, screw you, I'm going outside. What are you going to do about it? Right? They're going to force you at gunpoint or arrest you for inciting violence against the government if you protest being locked into your house 23 hours a day. It's unbelievable. It is, in my opinion, and I don't care where you come down on the whole debate about COVID, whatever. You might want everyone locked into a solitary confinement. You might want no mandates or anything out there or somewhere in between. That isn't even up for debate in my world. Um, freedom is never, you know, freedom's always a little dangerous, isn't it? But the bottom line is, if the government tells you to do something and you have no means to defend yourself against tyranny, then, you know, that's what the Second Amendment is all about. And I'm not saying we're, this is a call to arms and we're all going to meet down on the Village Green next week. I am saying that when you surrender all the guns, that's now off the table. And that's what's happening in other places. And for a while there, there was a lot of you know, gun control advocates that were pointing to the success of Australia. You couldn't pay me a million dollars to go move to Australia right now. And probably couldn't have anyway. But even still, it's just amazing what is going on there. And look at the rest of Europe, you know, France and Germany and uh, their, the lockdown mandates, even our northern border in Canada. It's unbelievable. And people are starting to revolt. You're almost seeing like a another revolution starting in these countries where they're being imposed, you know, vaccine passports and mandates and lockdowns. And and it's, you know, utterly uh, destroying small business. And so that's the problem is uh, the engine of the countries are small business. And when government gets big enough that it can just overrule and overtake small business as the the main business of the country taxes and levies and fines and everything else are now the main income source for government is it's scary man it's a scary place to be and i hope we never see that in this country but the one equalizer is the fact that private citizens have the right to keep and bear arms and our government was our founders were smart enough to acknowledge that this is an inherent fundamental right for every human being. That's why it extends to those who move here and don't even become citizens. We're just acknowledging the basic fundamental right and that these rights are endowed by our creator. And government, it was, I saw somebody said the other day that this, you know, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights was not what government is giving to us and limiting uh, what we have as a result of the government. It is limiting the powers of government as it relates to us. And so 
it, you know, they acknowledge that all these rights are are given to us by our Creator, and they are unalienable or inalienable. What does that mean? It means you cannot attach or you cannot lean these rights. And so we've been battling that for the last 150 years now to try to win our rights back that are unalienable or inalienable. You can't separate us from these rights. And people say, oh, you you know, the Constitution's a living, breathing document, and it can be changed in which it has been, and sometimes for the better. But the basic fundamental rights on the Bill of Rights are, you know, so integral to the fabric of our country. It would be a different country if we ever changed those and took those rights away. And frankly, government doesn't have the power to take those rights away. They do what we give them permission to do. And they have obviously grown a little too big for their britches and now feel that they can just have their way and do whatever it is that that they want. So I digress. Welcome to <laughs> Rapid Fire, where sometimes I get a little political. But anyway, um, that's what's going on in the country right now is a fundamental battle. I want to, oh, we'll do it on the other side of the break, but don't forget, uh, if you're looking for legal protection, text CGWMA to 281-603-0066. Text CGWMA to 281-603-0066 for a special offer from U.S. Law Shield. Cheap insurance, guys. Cheap membership, and they will cover you if you ever need it. We'll be right back. You're listening to Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Toby Leary. Be right back. Nobody thinks it will happen to them. But with over 2,000 emergency phone calls per month to our independent program attorney answered hotline, it's closer to home than you think. At U.S. Law Shield, we give you exclusive access to our 24 7, 365 emergency hotline. Not a call center, direct access to our network of independent program attorneys. With a price point of only $10.95 per month and unlimited attorney hours for criminal and civil defense, U.S. Law Shield provides you with unparalleled service and protection where it matters most. No other program comes close. We believe an educated member is an empowered member. We do this by providing educational resources featuring seasoned attorneys, firearms instructors, law enforcement, and experts in all areas we at U.S. Law Shield believe peace of mind should come with simple and affordable protection. Hello, this is attorney Keith G. Langer, not just a gun rights lawyer, but a fellow gun owner at home on the range as well as in court. I can help you obtain or regain your firearms license, recover or transfer your firearms, and defend you against firearms or other criminal charges. I can also help protect your property with will sets, including trusts, healthcare proxies, and powers of attorney, zoning or other permitting issues, as well as collections and civil litigation. To schedule a consultation, call 508 508- 384-8692, that's 508-384-8692, or visit my website, kglangerlaw.com. Talk to you soon. All right, welcome back to Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Toby Leary, and we are glad to be joined this week with attorney Keith Langer, who is a contributor of the show. If you need his services, we will certainly tell you how to get in touch with him we hope you never do but if you do you're ha- you're in good hands with attorney keith langer keith how you doing this week oh busy 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 toby how is it down there on the cape with the uh touristas about to decamp <laughs> well it's been you know i feel like a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest so there's a lot going on and we always have a lot of moving parts and things going crazy we just changed over to a new pos system and uh you know pos stands for point of point sale of but it also could mean something else but anyway let's get back to <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about at hand uh so keith what have you been up to lately in second amendment world i'm sure you 
get calls and stuff like that? Is that something you can talk about a little bit? Some of the cases. Oh, you've been... a couple of cases our listenership might find interesting. Back this spring, I filed an application for a client seeking a non-resident license to carry, hmm. which is generally not too big a deal, other than the music being restricted. But what made it interesting for this client is that they live outside the country. Hmm. So I did the packet, and the client sent it off, and it gets bounced back to her which takes forever because she's out of the country and COVID slowed the mails down even more. And there's no formal document from the FRB. Somebody just scribbled across my cover letter that it's not the FRB's practice to issue non-resident permits to people living outside the United States. Hmm. Of course, there's nothing in the statute that says that. So I wrote back to the FRB, that there's nothing in the statute that says that, and what do you base this ostensible policy on? Especially since it comes from some unsigned scribble on my cover letter as opposed to an actual formal declination with an actual citation to a basis. So, FRB takes it upstream to the head of its entity, which is the Executive Office of Public Safety Services, and their counsel kicks it around a while and comes to the blinding realization that I'm right. <laughs> so my client flew in at great expense to meet with the FRB, had the interview yesterday, and the client is getting the first non-resident permit issued by the FRB to someone who is not a U.S. resident ever. Wow. And it's unrestricted. Oh, that's even better. Well, the fact that when she was a uh, mass resident, she held an LTC probably helped. Yes, yeah. Well, that's that's great. And uh, obviously, you, you did some good work there helping and assisting that person. Now, uh, along those lines, we actually had a question last week on the show about a guy who has a non-resident LTC. Actually, I take that back. I think it was on the Grace Curley show. And uh, he said that it is restricted, and is there any way to get those restrictions removed? And I said, I don't know, I'll talk to Keith about it, but if a non-resident is restricted to target and hunting, is there a way to get those restrictions removed? Is there a way for them to appeal that restriction? Well, they can always request the restriction be lifted and provide documentation as to why. Mm -hmm. I've gotten unrestricted non-resident LTCs because the people were working in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, in one case, the guy lived in, I think, New Hampshire, but he was down in Massachusetts, Lowell, Lemonster, that area, uh, rehabbing derelict buildings, mm -hmm. which is a parlous undertaking, mm -hmm. especially when you've got trucks filled with expensive tools. Uh, and you're working in these neighborhoods, and he's often there at night, and depending on what he's doing, sometimes alone. So, yeah, I mean, I it's found a it function to, of need. I found it to be interesting that you know this guy could get a non-resident license to carry, but it was restricted to target and hunting. And frankly, he's not interested in hunting or target shooting in Massachusetts. He just wants the gun for personal protection. You know, he's not going to go hunting. You, he may or may not go to the shooting range. But frankly, it's um, <laughs> it just doesn't apply to him, but that's what he, he was given. So, uh, he was because he didn't provide an adequate basis. Uh, Rhode Island is infamous for that, and they keep making the criteria for need by the AG's office uh, more and more restrictive. Mm. Uh, applicants that I'd gotten non-resident permits for who were doing business here uh, years ago would not meet the AG's current crisis of need, which is basically if you're actively being attacked. <laughs> right. And what, what they don't want, and they'll tell you this, is they don't want collectors. They don't want people to say, oh, I've got a, a permit from every state in the Northeast. You know? Yeah. Well. So the fact that he wants one for personal protection ain't going to hack it. He needs to provide a reason for the uh, FRB to make it 
an unrestricted license. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed, um, like when I reapplied for my license to carry in Barnstable, I used to put for any lawful purpose, and they said, that's not good enough anymore. You need to give me another reason. And I said, okay, how about personal protection? That falls under any lawful purpose under my, you know, definition of for any lawful purpose. But then they said, okay, that's fine, you know. <laughs> so I never, I, I don't play that game. Uh, I certainly don't give them a laundry list because that gives an invitation to pick and choose from it. Uh-huh. Every application I prepare says, all lawful purposes per the controlling statute, Chapter 140, Section 131, subparagraph D. Got it. So, yeah. Now, if on the addendum, I can explain why. But on the application itself, no, I'm not playing their game. It's all lawful purposes per the controlling statute. So, and what need is not a requirement. <laughs> Right, no, I agree with that. Um, but what about if they won't even accept the application until you give them the laundry list? Like that that was what I was up against. They said, Nope, you gotta put something other than for any lawful purpose. Fine, put it in writing as a denial. <laughs> Interesting. Um, well, I found it to be you know, frustrating that that isn't just adequate for any lawful purpose, you know, but whatever. I mean every it's department for any intelligent and fair department. Right. It's not adequate for the ones that seek to obstruct and hinder, t delay, and deny applicants. Mm. It's not adequate for the ones that think they can hide behind a piece of paper. Right. Now, how does Massachusetts shake out as far as may issue or shall issue? It is a shall issue state, correct? Hardly. Hardly. I don't know where anybody re even remotely comprehending the statute we come to the conclusion that we are a shall issue state. The only time we were remotely close to a shall issue state was under the old FID statute, which said shall issue expressly for an FID card. Mm -hmm. Then they changed the statute to, well, it's sort of kind of shall issue, but if the chief doesn't really want to, he can go to court. Mm -hmm. And that's if he follows the law, as opposed to just denying you and making you go to court, which is what he should be doing. Right. In and fact, the FRB has a specific form on its website that they conveniently prepared for chiefs who want to not give you an FID card. Wow. If they refuse to give you a, an unrestricted LTC, is there any appeal at that point? Well, you can request removal of the restriction. If they deny that, you can appeal that. But I don't know anybody who's, who's gone to court to challenge a restriction still has done so successfully. Mm -hmm. I the mean, general course of action is to suck it up for a year, come back, say, I had it for a year, I didn't kill anybody, I wasn't running amok in a schoolyard, you've got no basis for restricting it, how about listing the restrictions? Got it. And of course, if you spend that time taking some serious courses uh, that you can show documentation for, well, even better. Yeah. You know, go to LFI 1 something like that. Sure. Now, be serious. Now, um, along those lines, uh, you know, you're, you've been restricted the first five years or whatever it works out to, five or six years. And when you go back, if they refuse, like a lot of the suburban towns around Boston restrict and don't issue for any lawful purpose or for personal protection. And even after going to Moon Island and proving their competency and blah, 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 able to shoot the target and all that. And so, you know, I've had people come in and say the chief flat out told them, you won't get it for any lawful purpose. You're just going to get it for target and hunting. And, uh, you know, at that point, you could challenge it. I mean, like you said, maybe people aren't because of the expense involved. But it seems logical to me that, you know, if I have no, there's no reason to restrict me. Um, what would the process be? Would they reach out to someone like you to help them in that situation? If they want to, uh, if they're willing to to go to the mat on that, but they should have some documentation as to why, A, they need all lawful purposes, and B, what training they've done to qualify them for, because that's what the judge is going to look at, because the judge wants to uphold the chief. 
Interesting. Well, welcome to the People's Republic of Maskanistan. <laughs> right. Uh, well, you remember the days when we had certain towns that would only issue an LTCB. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm dealing with one of those towns now. Uh, my client applied for an LTC, and he was denied. The chief claimed he was a convicted felon. Oh, so I, I ran the guy's quarry, and there's nothing on the quarry, but of course that's only adults. So I said, are you sure? Is there anything else? What about a juvenile? No, 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 squares up and down that he has nothing else. That, and the quarry has stuff on it, but there's not a single conviction. There's no conviction whatsoever. All right. Well, on, I got to run, Keith. Keep up the good work. I appreciate everything you do for the Second Amendment. We'll be right back. This is Rapid Fire. This is the Voltec VT-10i. It's your travel buddy, so it goes where you go. To your work on the road or at the range. It's the smart and rugged safe built to protect, no matter what you trust it with. We've made sure every inch of your safe is built to the highest possible standards. Security is at the forefront of our thoughts, so no unwanted guest. The VT-10i provides multiple quick and simple access points, including high resolution biometrics, backlit numeric keys, keyed entry, and even your smartphone for remote access. The two-point anti-impact latches keep your safe strong, and Voltec lithium-ion battery charges in just 2.5 hours and lasts up to six months. So it won't let you down. There's a reason we're the number one rated biometric safe. Get yours at VoltecSafe.com and find us online at facebook.com slash safe. May your tag of a lifetime finally come through. May the snow pile up and the elk come down. May your socks always stay dry. May the herd bull finally break from the herd. And may your aim always stay true. Welcome to the next level. Welcome to the Vortex. All right, welcome back to Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Toby Leary. And join us every week on Rapid Fire. Go to capegunworks.com, click on Rapid Fire so your voice can be heard. I want to thank attorney Keith Langer for coming on. As always, he's a plethora of information as it relates to the Second Amendment mass law, which is not an easy subject to navigate in this here state. So make sure you get signed up for the Veterans Top Shot Invitational. We would love to have you guys. You don't have to have any shooting experience to compete. We're going to have four-man teams. You can join as a single and be placed on a team, or you can come with a foursome. You're going to shoot four different guns, 22 long rifle uh, pistol, 22 rifle, 9mm tw- pistol, and 9mm rifle, all 50 feet, all slow fire. you got two minutes to shoot 10 rounds for each course of fire, and it'll all get scored and added up to- for your team score. And may the best team win. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to support some great charities. And it's going to be epic. We've had, This will be the third annual uh, Top Shot Invitational Shooting Contest. And we have it gets bigger and big, bigger every year. Lots of great prizes, vendors, giveaways, raffles, band, radio stations. Um, you know, there will be some... Food and beverage provided, so we'd love to have you. Get, go to TopShotInvitational.com to get signed up. And let's let the lead fly, because it's going to be awesome. And we look forward to having you. Maybe maybe we can convince Keith Langer to make an appearance. He's been thinking about it. So we got to get him pushed over the edge and have him put together his, his crack shot team, because I know he's a good com- competitor in his own right. So that's what you want. And a Second Amendment attorney who's also a shooter, gun owner, competitor, and lives the gun way of life here in Massachusetts. So it's not easy. So, um, yeah, we talked about the Biden administration, which is weaponizing the CDC and a lot of other three-letter agencies 
uh, coming after your guns any possible way they can. And uh, so, you know, hopefully we'll see resistant resistance to that. Um, but that is what we're up against. And uh, after the last segment, uh, Top Schweeb says, Lawful purposes are not defined in the Bill of Rights, and I would agree with that. You don't have to tell anyone why you want to exercise your Second Amendment right. But if you live in Massachusetts, I digress. You might have to. And so um, I want to know from you guys, is the arming of the Taliban the end of the gun control debate in this country? If you think about it, arming a terrorist organization that gets an F- minus on human rights, on women's rights, on gay rights, on rights in general of the public at large, on anybody who disagrees with them, and giving them $84 billion worth of military-grade equipment, including aircraft, armored personnel vehicles, body armor, night vision goggles, assault weapons, and I use that word in the pure, true sense of assault weapon, especially in the hands of the Taliban, light machine guns, rockets, drones, and everything else in between. So we just equipped the enemy, frankly, those who are about as anti-freedom, anti-civil rights as, you know, any other group on the face of the planet. They go around and dismember, brutally murder, and hold as prisoner the centers of their, their law system, which is based in Sharia law, and basically torture people and we just made them a very powerful force to be reckoned with the american government has done that and frankly i get the reason all that stuff got left in afghanistan was for the afghan military which basically turned tail and ran uh the vice president has offered a resistance and put up a fight I don't know if he'll be able to sustain that, but, and then we left. We said, good luck, guys. Here's a bunch of stuff. See you later. As far as I'm concerned, that ends the debate of gun control in this country. If you're willing to arm and outfit an army with military-grade equipment that is going to be proliferated on the black market throughout the world and used against our troops in harm's way. There's no question about that. That is going to happen. They'll make their way to Syria. They'll make their way to Iran. They'll make their way into China. They'll make their way to every hostile terrorist country on earth. And frankly, the government did that. The, I lay the blame 100% at our government's feet for that. And now, in the same breath, they want to level their sights at the American people, the responsible gun owners of America, and say, you can't have such and such, whether it be a 9 millimeter pistol with a high-capacity magazine or whether it be, and really it's standard capacity, but they have co-opted that term, and now high capacity in the eyes of government officials is anything over 10 rounds. They're saying you can't own... An AR-15, which is the most popular rifle in America. And they're saying you can't own, uh, you know, quote-unquote ghost guns, which is basically a manufactured gun that you decide to build for yourself, for your own pleasure and for your own, um, you know, enjoyment. It's a very hobbyistic thing to do. It's not nefarious in any way, shape, or form. It's not doesn't mean you're a, a criminal because you build a gun that the government has no idea that you've built. It doesn't matter. It is a gun that you are legally and lawfully able to possess and own. So who cares if you built it or if Smith & Wesson built it or if Glock built it? It doesn't matter. 
and the fact that the government doesn't know anything about it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. And the fact that government wants to know is proof of their intent of controlling every aspect of your life and making sure that when the time comes, they can come round up all the guns because they know of every gun that's made. If, if they don't know about it, well, how are they going to come get it from you? Well, if you're not planning on coming and rounding up my guns, why do you need to know about it? doesn't matter, right? I'm not a prohibited person. So I want to know, does the fact that we just armed a terrorist organization after a 20-year war end the gun control debate in the minds of Americans for good in this country? Because it certainly does for me. I mean, it was a debate that was ended a long time ago in my mind. But now the contrast is so great when you see government's willingness to arm a terrorist organization and government's willingness to disarm responsible gun owners in America. What the heck? Where did we come from? How did we get there from, you know, how did we get here from there? You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you can't get there from here. So in one breath, you're saying, yeah, we're going to arm the Taliban. And now Taliban, we're going to partner with them for the security of our people. Here's a list of names of people that need safe passage to the airport. And by the way, as long as they get there before we pull up stakes and fly out, um, yeah, we're going to uh, hope the Taliban complies. And the Taliban stand in there wearing our body armor, our, holding our M4 rifles, fully armed with magazines loaded with our ammo, and not to mention getting some good flight training in with our uh, Chinook and our Black Hawk helicopters. It's just unbelievable to me. Somebody actually did the math. Let's just say... Cape Gunworks had a big stash of $85 billion worth of military-grade equipment. And I decided to sell that stuff to the Mexican drug cartel. If I had done something like that, somebody actually did the math on how long of a jail sentence I would be facing. Take a guess how long that sentence would be. What would I be facing in terms of jail time? So hold on to your seat because I'd be going away for a long time. And that time is probably longer than we've been around. It's 12 million years of jail time I'd be facing if I did that. But our government does it and gets away with it and says, oh, yeah, hey, Taliban's our partner in Afghanistan now. We're going to go to the table and figure out, uh, you know, how to negotiate with them. And now we're facing a situation where they have a list of names of people who are in the state, in the country, and didn't get out, and we're not there to protect them. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll find a way for them to get out. It's just unbelievable to me. But as far as I'm concerned, I think the average American is smart enough to see that contrast and now say, hey, wait a minute, guns in the hands of responsible Americans, not a bad thing. Guns in the hands of Taliban probably is a bad thing. Now, they already had a lot of guns and ammo and everything else. They've been fighting a war forever. But frankly, here they are, and they're you know, armed with American military equipment. It's, it's just utterly disheartening, especially for those who went and fought and, you know, spent time, gave blood, gave limbs, gave loved ones in Afghanistan. And now to see how this has come apart at the seams and the utter incompetence at the highest levels. I don't just blame Joe Biden. I blame generals and military people as well, because, you know, the only one who's been fired over this debacle is the guy that questioned authority. And it's sad. But Anyway, um, let's let's pray for those who are probably going through a hard time and, you know, those wounds that have been picked, that scab that has been picked. And, uh, you know, it's it's just, it's terrible. But anyway, we did put uh, Attorney Keith Langer's contact information up there on the board. Um, and we want you guys to reach him if you need him. 
Uh, we'll put it into the chat, and uh, you can you can reach out to him if you need to. But what's your what do you guys say? Does that end the the debate, the gun control debate in your mind? I'm I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, but what else? What about opening this debate up to people who might not be the echo chamber? I think that's a really good way for people to listen uh, and to stimulate debate. And now that we have this situation in Afghanistan, it's a good springboard into painting that picture of contrast. People might say, oh, well, that's over there. It's not going to affect us. Eh, I, I, I disagree. I think that could make its way here. It could make its way into the uh, you know, affect American soldiers in harm's way, or it could make its way all the way back to our country. You never know with the way things are at the southern border. They could certainly come across, and you know, not to mention how many military age males that we uh, got out of Afghanistan. And who knows? Have they all been, uh, you know, been vetted, and have they been, uh, you know, interviewed and really done background checks on? Who knows? It could go. A, hundred different directions but all i know is we got to stay vigilant and uh we got to stay on the front lines of tyranny wherever it may be found and we got to challenge those who would want to take away our fundamental rights as a responsible gun owner in america so all right we'll be right back you're listening to rapid fire uh make sure you tune in every week Go to capegunworks.com, click on Rapid Fire, and text CGWMA to 281-603-0066. That's CGWMA to 281-603-0066. And members can call the lawyer anytime, even for compliance questions. So you want to become a member of the uh, U.S. Law Shield, go to that. All right, we'll be right back. I'm Toby Leary. If you crave versatility in a tactical reticle, the new ARBDC-3 delivers with a host of features you need to adapt in the field. A 1 MOA center dot provides a precise point of aim, while the surrounding 16 MOA open circle helps get your eye into the center faster for rapid target acquisition in close quarters. The ARBDC-3 also adapts to a variety of light conditions. The center dot and surrounding open circle illuminate for low light shooting, and because the reticle is glass etched, it can also function without any illumination. When you need to go long, the upper ranging feature allows you to range silhouette targets out to 600 yards, while the bullet drop compensator, or BDC, keeps you on target out to 650 yards. Plus, you get wind holds for 5, 10, and 15 mile per hour winds. The ARBDC-3 is specifically tuned to the ballistic performance of most common 5.56 loads out of an AR-15. There are resources in the reticle manual for conversions to 308, and as with any BDC, information gathered from a chronograph and ballistics calculator can adapt these hash marks to any other caliber and its own unique ballistic curve. From point blank to way down range, adapt with the ARBDC-3. This is the Voltec VT-10i. It's your travel buddy, so it goes where you go. To your work, on the road, or at the range. It's the smart and rugged safe built to protect, no matter what you trust it with. We've made sure every inch of your safe is built to the highest possible standards. Security is at the forefront of our thoughts, so no unwanted guest. The VT-10i provides multiple quick and simple access points, including high-resolution biometrics, backlit numeric keys, keyed entry, and even your smartphone for remote access. The two-point anti-impact latches keep your safe strong, and Voltec lithium-ion battery charges in just 2.5 hours and lasts up to six months, so it won't let you down. There's a reason we're the number one rated biometric safe. Get yours at VoltecSafe.com and find us online at Facebook.com slash VoltecSafe.
May your tag of a lifetime finally come through. May the snow pile up and the elk come down. May your socks always stay dry. May the herd bull finally break from the herd. And may your aim always stay true. Welcome to the next level. Welcome to the Vortex. All right, welcome back to Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Toby Leary. Join us every week at capegunworks.com. Click on Rapid Fire or wherever you find your podcast or if you tune in on the radio, we're glad that you're here. So before the break, we were talking about a bunch of political stuff. I'm going to kind of break that off from for now. I wade into the deep end of the pool every once in a while and talk politics. Um, I don't know if some of you got a chance to join me on the Howie Carr Show uh, a couple Fridays ago. Last Friday, he was here in studio, I mean, in the in the shop at Cape Gunworks. But the week before, I was able to do the 6 to 7 o'clock hour in his studio. I covered for him, and we talked a, a bunch of guns and took questions and whatnot. It was a ton of fun. And uh, so I'm going to be filling in for the Grace Curley show on the 25th, So and maybe even on the 10th, so next Friday. Um, so you can always tune in on WRKO and hear us there and get your questions and whatnot. So I, I want a mainstream gun talk in New England. How about that? So that'd be cool. It'd be great to uh, hear from you guys when I'm filling in. And uh, that'll be awesome. But a couple new things on the horizon. I don't know if you guys saw that FN came out with a non-reciprocating charging handle on their SCAR rifles. Which is awesome. Because... It was high time that they did that, but their highly successful SCAR series of rifles, the SCAR 16S, the 17S, and the 20S, they do have a reciprocating charging handle at this point, but they finally got caught up to the rest of the world, like the CZ Brens of the world, which their version 1, the S1 rifle, or S1 carbine, had a reciprocating charging handle, and one of our former uh, gunsmiths, Derek, actually gave some blood with that reciprocating charging handle and ended up at the urgent care up the road getting a few stitches. So, uh, yeah, it, it was high time that they did it. It was actually the only knock I actually had on the rifle other than maybe a short handguard. I think it should have a little bit longer handguard. But, frankly, uh, it's a phenomenal rifle. It's very bulletproof. And if you get the SCAR 16S, it takes AR mags. So that's a good thing. And it's a totally different design from an AR, but it's a good modern sporting rifle that you can own in Massachusetts because it's not an AR or an AK or a, you know, FNFAL or a Galil or so, so on and so forth. I get that question a lot. Like, how can you sell the CZ Bren, but you can't sell an AR? I'm like, well, the CZ Bren didn't exist when the law was passed. So if it did it probably would be banned because, frankly, they are all the same gun. They all semi-automatic, semi-automatic, take a detachable magazine and has a pistol grip and a stock. And there you go. That's pretty much what they are, like a Ruger Mini 14 or a uh, CZ Bren or an AR-15. It's all the same gun. But for some reason, I can sell a couple of them, but I can't sell the AR. Thank you, Maura Healy. 7 2016, the day that'll live in infamy. I had a quick question. <laughs> quick question uh, before the break on the chat. Ryan says um, if he has a pistol with a thumb safety, is it legal for him to take the thumb safety off? 100% yes. If you are proficient enough with how firearms work and you're capable of tape, taking that safety off, we as a practice don't really get into that. I don't remove people's thumb safeties. I would just urge them to buy a gun without a thumb safety. And um, yeah, that's, uh, but there's no law that says you can't do that. In fact, a lot of people buy the Smith & Wesson pistol, which has a 10 and a half pound trigger pull. 
and then we immediately sell them an Apex trigger kit and we put that in to get it back down to a five and a half or six and a half pound trigger where it should be on a striker fired pistol instead of a ten and a half pound trigger pull. So there's no law against that. The big deal is we as a gun dealer cannot sell you certain guns, but there's no law that restricts you from owning whatever gun it is that you want as long as you can legally obtain it through either a private transfer or a may in, in some cases a gun dealer that'll sell it to you um, but the point is there's no law restricting you from owning any gun other than if it violates the assault weapons ban so hopefully that clears up your question there ryan and uh yeah there is a lot of cool guns out there for you um but so you got to check out what we got in the store it's a constant you know revolving door of guns so you want to check us check out our inventory and uh yeah do it while you can and don't forget to check out date night every friday night and ladies night every other thursday we have range experience packages where you don't need a ltc to shoot if you've never shot a gun and you want to try it out that's what i'd recommend you come in and do a range experience package you get to shoot three different guns no license necessary and we provide everything you need all right, we'll be right back. You're listening to Rapid Fire. I'm Toby Leary. May your tag of a lifetime finally come through. May the snow pile up and the elk come down. May your socks always stay dry. May the herd bull finally break from the herd. And may your aim always stay true. Welcome to the next level. Welcome to the Vortex. Alexander Hamilton said, those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. This is Toby from Cape Gunworks. When our founding fathers drafted the Second Amendment, there was no question of its meaning. Today, if you have questions, come to Cape Gunworks for some advice, training, or to send a few rounds downrange. We have a fully stocked pro shop with a huge selection of guns, crossbows, archery, classes, rentals, a 15-lane range, and a friendly staff. Come on down to Cape Gunworks Airport Road Hyannis or capegunworks.com. Welcome back to Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Toby Leary, and join us every week for Rapid Fire. If you go to capedunworks.com, click on Rapid Fire, get signed up so you can be a part of the discussion. We love answering your questions. You can also call in if you want, and uh, we will go ahead and help you out, point you in the right direction, whatever you need from us. We'll try to get to all your questions on the chat. So this is the second hour of the uh, of the rapid fire segment here and we're glad to be on wcrn for two hours now and eventually i'd like to do this live on wcrn and take some calls and questions and whatnot but that'll be on a saturday morning we're on from 9 to 11 and uh right now we're not able to do that because it's been a little crazy but we're going to get there someday so that'll be a lot of fun but if you want to be on the phone or on the chat go ahead and get signed up at our website, capegunworks.com. And September is like training month. There's more classes going on in September than we've had in a long time. It's going to be awesome. You can also do a carbine class, a defensive carbine fundamentals class with yours truly. Um, So get signed up there. There's still some uh, spots available. And we're constantly getting guns in, ammo in. The ammo, uh, we get questions all the time. How's the ammo situation? and it is getting better and better it's not really coming down in price too too much but eventually it will hopefully um you never know what the whole russian ban on ammo and russian imports on guns is going to do eventually to that i don't think it's going to kill the ak-47 market it's still a very strong market in the rest of the country obviously here in the people's republic we don't have that option unless it's pre-ban and pre-ban guns get expensive so they are out there you can find them and you know there's a lot of people that take advantage of that but for the rest of us (laughs) 
you know, who don't want to spend 3000 bucks and buy a safe queen. We want a shooter. Um, we did a lot of discussion with on the M10X rifle, the M&M M10X hybrid rifle, which was a gun that we bought heavily into. I've sold probably 50 or 60 of them. And we had some issues with them during COVID because the bolts were breaking. So I don't know if you've bought one of those and had that same situation, but I met with one of them, the actual engineer who designed and built that gun uh, from M&M Industries out in Fort Worth, Texas. I met with them at the booth and they are very aware of the issues and they said they have fixed that issue. I said, look, I want to believe in this gun. I want to shoot this gun. They actually said they're going to come on our show. We're going to do a, a segment with them on rapid fire at some point and they're going to explain it, you know, what happened there. But they said that the design of the gun is solid. The problem is some of the outsourced parts during COVID went to a manufacturer that had treated the bolts and whatnot with some special uh, nickel boron that ate into the bolt and they left it in the bath or however they manufacture it, the plating process, too long. And it it did the opposite of temper the bolt. It brit made the bolt brittle. So they were breaking uh, left and right. So they've sent us a bunch of backup bolts. They've sent us some call tags for some of the rifles that were returned. Because when this was happening, I didn't even question it. I just returned the rifle for people and uh, got them into something else. But it's a gun that I really believe in. And I want to see it be successful because, frankly, it's a good niche gun for the Massachusetts market. It's not an AK. It's not an AR. But it takes AK magazines and shoots 7.62 by 39, which is a very popular AK round. And the AK magazine is very abundant and available to get in a pre-band high-capacity mag we sell them all the time they're even fairly reasonable for pre-band high caps as they go they're i think 40 or 45 bucks a piece and you can afford to buy a few of them and these m10x rifles are fairly reasonable as well i think they're 15.99 and they have a lot of picatinny rail it's a monolithic handguard design so there's no gap between the handguard and the receiver it's a monolithic rail so putting optics on it you're not compromising by bridging across that gap with typical scope rings. Um, but it's a great modern sporting rifle that I'm really looking forward to pushing again in the shop because I, I really do believe in it. And after talking with the uh, national sales manager and the engineer of the rifle, it sounds like this was a bump in the road for them. And I'm looking forward to pushing them out there in earnest again. We had one on the range for shooting as a you know range gun and the bolt broke and we replaced it and the bolt broke again so now with the new bolts we have in stock we're gonna go ahead and replace that put it back out on the range we have five or six of them that have come back we're sending them back they've given us call tags so they're doing all the right things they apologized profusely and uh i'm really looking forward to seeing that rifle become work out its kinks and get the work out the bugs because it is a phenomenal phenomenal uh gun and so in the first hour of the show we had john green on from goal and i just want to give out their information one more time go to goal.org and you'll see a plethora of information and if you're not a member of goal i highly recommend it they're the ones doing the lord's work here in massachusetts as far as you know regulations and laws and legislations are is concerned and uh they have some great articles there's one on the uh their website under goal news about how mass gun laws are arguably costing lives and i have talked about this extensively on the show in the past about how massachusetts restrictive gun laws which the politicians like to tout nationally as saving lives well goal has written an article how it's actually costing lives and massachusetts is as i've pointed out before the most violent country uh country the most violent state in new england so you look to our north we have constitutional carry in maine vermont and new hampshire we have rhode island of course and connecticut and massachusetts is by far 
the most violent of you know the the rest of the states in New England and up to our north where gun laws virtually don't exist on a state level as John Green pointed out they basically adopt and enforce gun laws as they apply federally but on a state level they really don't exist per se in a way that's going to impact or influence your life and the gun rate uh, gun crime or violent crime rate is far lower than Massachusetts so I think you need to dive a little bit deeper into the weeds on that front if you're you know advocating strict gun laws and I remember watching a video by Bill Whittle a few years ago as he outlines uh, gun control as it breaks down state by state and across the country and he even talks a lot about the 94 assault weapons ban but one thing that's pretty cool is he compares our country to other countries and the violent crime statistics and you look at a country like Honduras for instance which has the same population as Sweden Sweden requires uh, private people citizens to own guns Honduras forbids it and for Honduras has one of the highest violent murder rates in the world and Sweden has one of the lowest so guns don't cause crime just like spoons don't cause obesity uh, so yeah there you have it <laughs> I'll get off the soapbox but we're done here but you can join us online and uh, I thank you for tuning in every week remember the show ends here but you can find us online at capegunworks.com click on rapid fire keep up the good fight support your local community and your local gun advocates join a club join the organizations that promote freedom and uh, we applaud you guys listening and doing your part so thanks so much for tuning in this week god bless i'm toby leary we'll see you next week Kick us off. We're doing an approved demonstration on a, on a range in a very safe way with a very dirty gun. Alright, we're gonna figure it out. Here we go. Ready? Oh. Alright, cool. Fire's nice. It speaks the universal language. A cool gun. Wicked cool. We're always into cool guns here at Cape Gunworks. We got the Nighthawk Custom 9mm President in the Smoke Nitride finish. And uh, it's a pretty cool gun. Just testing out the gun. Alright. This is a test of the Cape Gunworks uh, gun testing program. Big bulls need big country. I'm talking about wild rivers, desolate peaks, high basins, and wide open valleys. Places where bulls can chase cows, drink fresh mountain water, and bugle into the void. This is elk country.
our public lands give all of us the opportunity to discover our own adventure. Whether it's your first hunt or your 100th hunt, we own this place. I'm Brad Brooks from Argali, and these are my public lands. Let's all do our part to support the companies and the organizations that are protecting the future of our elk hunting heritage. The R series is our smart rifle safe. It's Wi-Fi enabled, biometric, and has modular interior. The R series will store multiple ARs and pistol combinations. The backlit numeric keypad will light up at night to allow you to enter the safe in dark environments. And the fingerprint scanner stores up to 20 unique fingerprints. The RS series can be customized by placing the accessories anywhere you like on the perforated mounting board. A total of four solid steel locking bolts will keep your safe firmly locked and secure. The anti pry bars built into the safe will protect it from tools and small objects trying to penetrate the exterior of the safe. Wi-Fi on the RS works with your phone to help you get live alerts, temperature and humidity detection alerts, manage user accounts, check battery usage, and much more. The RS series is smart key enabled, so you can use the smart key nano or smart key to enter your safe with the press of a button. The Hornady Rapid Vehicle Safe features fast and dependable touch-free access to your firearm while in your vehicle. The RFID wristband, key fob, or decal instantly opens the Rapid Vehicle Safe for immediate access to your handgun. The conventional key lock can also be used. The included mounting system allows the safe to be secured without the need to modify your vehicle. This patent pending mounting system features an inflatable bladder that slides between the seat and center console, securely positioning the safe in a ready position. With an exterior housing made of 14 gauge steel and two internal hardened locking lugs, the Rapid Vehicle Safe exceeds ASTM international safety standards for child and pry resistance. The Rapid Vehicle Safe from Hornady ensures your handgun is always protected and ready to go wherever you go. This is the first focal plane Diamondback Tactical. At the intersection of precision and value, the Diamondback Tactical first focal plane rifle scopes deliver an impressive array of features and performance. The XD optical system and fully multi-coated lenses transmit a crisp, bright sight picture. First focal plane, glass etched reticle keeps subtensions accurate throughout the 4x zoom range. Exposed tactical turrets and a side parallax knob give shooters the tools needed for long distance precision shooting. The single piece 30mm tube is ruggedly built to withstand recoil and impacts. While strong O ring seals and nitrogen purging guarantee waterproof and fog proof performance. Purpose built to extend your effective range and stretch your dollar, the Diamondback Tactical comes equipped with the features you need at an unbelievable price. And it's covered for life by the Vortex VIP warranty. Nobody thinks it will happen to them, but with over 2,000 emergency phone calls per month to our independent program attorney answered hotline, it's closer to home than you think. At U.S. Law Shield, we give you exclusive access to our 24-7, 365 emergency hotline. Not a call center, direct access to our network of independent program attorneys. With a price point of only $10.95 per month and unlimited attorney hours for criminal and civil defense, U.S. Law Shield provides you with unparalleled service and protection where it matters most. No other program comes close. We believe an educated member is an empowered member. We do this by providing educational resources featuring seasoned attorneys, firearms instructors, law enforcement, and experts in all areas. We at U.S. Law Shield believe peace of mind should come with simple and affordable protection. This is the Voltec VT-10i. It's your travel buddy so it goes where you go. To your work, on the road, or at the range. It's the smart and rugged safe built to protect, no matter what you trust it with. We've made sure every inch of your safe is built to the highest possible standards. Security is at the forefront of our thoughts, 
so no unwanted guest. The VT-10i provides multiple quick and simple access points, including high-resolution biometrics, backlit numeric keys, keyed entry, and even your smartphone for remote access. The two-point anti-impact latches keep your safe strong, and Voltec lithium-ion battery charges in just 2.5 hours and lasts up to six months. So it won't let you down. There's a reason we're the number one rated biometric safe. Get yours at VoltecSafe.com and find us online at Facebook.com slash VoltecSafe. SnapSafe TSA Padlock comes in a convenient two-pack and features an overbuilt all-steel design. The TSA lock allows TSA inspectors to inspect your luggage without damaging your lock. The four-digit tumblers give you 10,000 possible combinations and these locks work great for hard cases, camera equipment, or personal luggage. For more information, check us out at SnapSafe.com. Big bulls need big country. I'm talking about wild rivers, desolate peaks, high basins, and wide open valleys. Places where bulls can chase cows, drink fresh mountain water, and bugle into the void. This is elk country. Our public lands give all of us the opportunity to discover our own adventure. Whether it's your first hunt or your 100th hunt, we own this place. I'm Brad Brooks from Argali, and these are my public lands. Let's all do our part to support the companies and the organizations that are protecting the future of our elk hunting heritage. The RS series is our smart rifle safe. It's Wi-Fi enabled, biometric, and has modular interior. The RS series will store multiple ARs and pistol combinations. The backlit numeric keypad will light up at night to allow you to enter the safe in dark environments. And the fingerprint scanner stores up to 20 unique fingerprints. The RS series can be customized by placing the accessories anywhere you like on the perforated mounting board. A total of four solid steel locking bolts will keep your safe firmly locked and secure. The anti-pry bars built into the safe will protect it from tools and small objects trying to penetrate the exterior of the safe. Wi-Fi on the RS works with your phone to help you get live alerts, temperature and humidity detection alerts, manage user accounts, check battery usage, and much more. The RS series is smart key enabled, so you can use the smart key nano or smart key to enter your safe with the press of a button. The Hornady Rapid Vehicle Safe features fast and dependable touch-free access to your firearm while in your vehicle. The RFID wristband, key fob, or decal instantly opens the Rapid Vehicle Safe for immediate access to your handgun. The conventional key lock can also be used. The included mounting system allows the safe to be secured without the need to modify your vehicle. This patent pending mounting system features an inflatable bladder that slides between the seat and center console, securely positioning the safe in a ready position. With an exterior housing made of 14 gauge steel and two internal hardened locking lugs, the Rapid Vehicle Safe exceeds ASTM international safety standards for child and pry resistance. The Rapid Vehicle Safe from Hornady ensures your handgun is always protected and ready to go wherever you go. This is the first focal plane Diamondback Tactical. At the intersection of precision and value, the Diamondback Tactical first focal plane rifle scopes deliver an impressive array of features and performance. The XD optical system and fully multi-coated lenses transmit a crisp, bright sight picture. 
first focal plane, glass etched reticle keeps subtensions accurate throughout the 4x zoom range. Exposed tactical turrets and a side parallax knob give shooters the tools needed for long distance precision shooting. The single piece 30mm tube is ruggedly built to withstand recoil and impacts. While strong O-ring seals and nitrogen purging guarantee waterproof and fogproof performance. Purpose built to extend your effective range and stretch your dollar, the Diamondback Tactical comes equipped with the features you need at an unbelievable price. And it's covered for life by the Vortex VIP warranty. Nobody thinks it will happen to them, but with over 2,000 emergency phone calls per month to our independent program attorney answered hotline, it's closer to home than you think. At U.S. Law Shield, we give you exclusive access to our 24-7, 365 emergency hotline. Not a call center, direct access to our network of independent program attorneys. With a price point of only $10.95 per month and unlimited attorney hours for criminal and civil defense, U.S. Law Shield provides you with unparalleled service and protection where it matters most. No other program comes close. We believe an educated member is an empowered member. We do this by providing educational resources featuring seasoned attorneys, firearms instructors, law enforcement, and experts in all areas. We at U.S. Law Shield believe peace of mind should come with simple and affordable protection. This is the Voltec VT-10i. It's your travel buddy so it goes where you go. To your work, on the road, or at the range. It's the smart and rugged safe built to protect, no matter what you trust it with. We've made sure every inch of your safe is built to the highest possible standards. 